Shalom guys, I want to talk today about what happened in the Netherlands in Holland because it's quite extraordinary. You are looking now at the stadium of Ajax Amsterdam, one of the greatest clubs in European history. And the reason we are talking about Amsterdam today is because a lot of Israelis traveled to Amsterdam to support their team Maccabi Tel Aviv. Now we need to understand that Ajax Amsterdam is quite an extraordinary club because the fans, even the hooligans, say that they are the super Jew. That's how they call themselves. And because of this, you have some bizarre pictures of Dutch people, Dutch fans of Ajax singing, for example, a very Jewish folk song as Havan Aguila. Just listen to this. So, you know, this is not uncommon on Ajax games. You will see Israeli flags, you will see chants of the fans singing Israeli songs, and you will see people calling themselves, we are Jews. That's how you should call us. And there was even a documentary made about this phenomenon, and it's called The Super Jews. And it's in Dutch and in Hebrew, but you can read the subtitles. And you know, the Ajax fans are really dedicated to this. They own these nicknames. You will see giant flags on stadiums. You would see people tattooing on their arms the Star of David. So it's serious stuff. And of course, in the Netherlands, you not only have Ajax, there are other major clubs that are also quite important. And the rivalry between those clubs is very big. But the rivalry between the fans of those clubs is even bigger and it's much more extreme. And as you have fans of Ajax Amsterdam that call themselves the Jews, you also have fans of Feyenoord Rotterdam that are the arch enemies of those fans. And you know, just so that you understand how extreme this support is, how extreme the expression of it is, when Ajax fans have, you know, songs that they sing, that are like Havana Gila, they have the flags of Israel, they have the tattoos of the Star of David. The fans of Feyenoord Rotterdam make a special sound during the games that is to pretend to be the sound of the gas that is put into the gas chambers, reminding that the fans of Ajax Amsterdam should be gassed. And of course, in the Jewish context, this is huge. The reason why Ajax supporters, I mean, one of the reasons why Ajax supporters call themselves the Jews is because before World War II, there were over 70,000 Jewish people living in Amsterdam. And the stadium is located where a lot of those Jews were living. And because of this, Ajax as a club had a big Jewish following. Of course, today it is not the case. There is much less Jews living in Holland. And in fact, a very small percentage of the people that follow Ajax, that support Ajax, are actually Jewish. And you know, Ajax is certainly the most successful club in Holland, one of the most successful clubs in Europe. It has a beautiful history of football. But because it is one of the best, everybody else from Holland hates Ajax. The fans of other clubs hate Ajax because they are the best. And this is also something that is creating a lot, a lot of tensions. And especially when they use such a symbol as a symbol of a Jewish nation. Now, why am I saying all of this? Well, first of all, I am saying this so that you understand the context. This is the context of this situation. And you know, I rather say it to you, I rather tell you about it and that you hear it from me than other media that might twist and use this situation. Because what the media will do and is already doing is saying that this is another hooligan fight between the fans, the fans of Maccabi and the fans of Ajax Amsterdam, which is not true. 
And you can clearly understand that it is not true if you know who Ajax fans are and who do they support, who do they identify with. They identify as the Jew. So it's not a hooligan fight between the Maccabi fans and Ajax fans. It is not that. This is something much bigger and something much more serious. But the media will be presenting this as a hooligan fight. And as a proof of this, here you can see a headline from the Daily Mail blaming the Maccabi Tel Aviv fans for first, you know, disturbing the peace, destroying the flags of Palestine. This is the narrative that you will probably hear. This is a footage of Tomer Talias, an Israeli who came to the game of Maccabi. And his witness of what was actually happening after the game is terrifying. He said that the people that were attacked were not only men, were women and children. And they were hunted down by groups of angry men with Palestinian flags. This was an organized group of violent men that went on the streets of Amsterdam and were asking everybody, if somebody didn't know how to speak Dutch, if somebody spoke Hebrew or couldn't speak Dutch, he was beaten. And it didn't matter if you were a man, a woman or a child. That's disgraceful. And of course, I cannot show you many videos that are an evidence of what happened last night. But many Jewish people are calling this a pogrom. Pogrom is a term that comes from the Russian language and it means brutal attacks on the Jewish population in the former Russian Empire. And many of those brutal attacks on the Jewish population happened in the Russian Empire at the end of the 19th century and at the beginning of the 20th century. So, if you remember from history, the Russian Empire created a special settlement zone where the Jewish people were supposed to live. They didn't have a choice. They had to move there from the Russian Empire. So, in those days, Russia controlled a lot of the territory of today's Poland, Lithuania, uh, Belarus, Ukraine. And this is where the Jewish people had to move. And once they moved there, not only that they were forced to change the place of their living, they were also persecuted in this special zone due to the many, many pogroms. Now, you may be asking, where was police in all of this? Because how can a mob of people in a civilized country just walk around, persecute people, kick them, beat them up, and even kidnap them, take hostages? How is this possible? Well, there are some really disturbing things coming to light about the Dutch police. So apparently policemen who didn't feel comfortable to protect Jewish sites were not forced to do so. They could just say, no, I don't want to do my job. I don't want to protect Jewish sites. And they were allowed to do so. And now when there is a huge security problem, the Jewish people are not safe at all, because there is not enough police to protect them. That's really problematic. And you know, I am not really, really surprised that this is happening. I was saying that this will happen. As Europe will become more and more Muslim, it will become more and more anti-Semitic. These are just basically the fact, and Europe will become more and more Muslim as the years go. So this will go on and it will increase and increase in violence toward the Jewish people in Europe. Now, if you want to learn more about this, I made a special episode about the growth of Islam and how it will affect the world. So make sure you check it out. I will leave a link to this episode in the description of the video you are watching right now. 
To end, I want to say this. I know that not every Dutch person is anti-Semitic. And of course, it is very painful that this is happening in the Netherlands. And I understand that this is perhaps even a small minority that did this. But I think the problem will continue and it will grow if the people don't do something about it. Because this is, unfortunately, the nature of radical Islam, which is represented by many of those groups that are doing this violence. So I am grateful for everybody who's praying for Israel from the Netherlands. Thank you so much. But maybe it's time also for you to think about how you can react to this in a serious way. Maybe there is still time to reverse this. Think about it. And thank you for doing so and praying. For all of you who want to be updated on the current situation, make sure to follow me on social media. Platforms like X and Telegram allow me to show more show more of the images of what is actually happening because YouTube can block a lot of things and uh, this can actually cause damage to the channel. So if you haven't signed up uh, and you are interested, uh, these are the social medias that you can follow me on. I will try to keep you updated. And also, if you would like, you can uh, sign up for an email where I will be sending you emails when an update from Israel, my channel will come. So if you're interested in that, make sure to sign up to my email. All the links that you see now on your screen will also be in the description of this video. So if you want to copy them, find them in the description of this video. With that, I wish you all the best. Please continue to pray for the current situation for the families of the people that were injured, for the people that were injured themselves, for everybody who's still in danger. Have a peaceful evening. Shalom.